Hello everyone. Today I'm going to present you our new two round and Schnorr based multi signature scheme. Multi signature protocol is a signature scheme where um, it allows multiple parties collaboratively sign a message. And it can be verified by anyone who has the public keys of signers. And it consists of following algorithms. The first algorithm is the key generation algorithm. With the secret, it which outputs a secret and public key pair for a signer, and the other one is the signing algorithm, uh, which runs with the input of the uh, secret key and the message, and it's an interactive algorithm run by the uh, other signers. There is also key aggregation algorithm which receives the public key of the signers as an input and then outputs an aggregate an aggregated key. There is also verification algorithm, which verifies the signature with the aggregated public key. As I said, our uh, scheme is based on Schnorr signature scheme. Therefore, I would like to remind you how Schnorr signature scheme works. It works on a group of order P and G here is the generator. And the secret key is, a, is an element from ZP and the public key is X multiplied with G. And signer signs the message as follows. It first picks a random element from ZP and then generates the T, which is R multiplied with G. And here we call T the commitment of the Schnorr signature scheme. And also it hashes the message, the public key and the commitment and obtains the C value. And it obtains finally as S value, which is the sum of R and XC and the signature consists of C and SC. Uh, verification works as follows. Given the message and uh, the signature, the verifier checks whether hash of the message, the public key, and SU minus CX is equal to C. And if the signature is cor correctly constructed, then SG minus CX should be equal to T. One common approach to construct a, a Schnorr based multi signature scheme is letting parties to collaboratively letting parties collaboratively generate a commitment T and then using the linearity of the Schnorr signature scheme obtain uh, the final signature. Um, so in three round case it is much easy to do the generation of the commitments collaboratively but in two round case it is not um, as easy as in the three round case. Because in two round case, first each party send, um, send some messages to generate this commitment. And then they send their partial signatures to obtain the S value of the section or signature scheme. However, here we, we, we should be very careful in the commitment generation process uh, to prevent adversarial choice of randomness that depends on uh, the parties, on this parties randomness. These are existing uh, two round Schnorr based mass signature schemes. Um, there has been many before, but it has been proven, it has been shown by drivers at all that uh, the existing ones are not secure at all by showing an attack that is called case attack. And this attack is based on the adversarial choice of randomness that depends on the honest party's randomness. And after that, drivers at all propose a new scheme that's called MBCJ. Uh, it's a Schnorr based uh, scheme, but uh, the uh, form of the signature is not the same as the Schnorr signature scheme. Therefore, the verification is less efficient and the domain uh, size, the public key size and signature size is bigger. Uh, than the Schnorr signature. And the rest of the existing ones actually are in the form of Schnorr signature. Therefore, they all have the same verification efficiency and the same domain. Okay, the other interesting protocol uh, is MusicDN. Um, MusicDN uh, has a different approach to prevent the adversary choice of randomness. Uh, it is based on uh, deterministic nonsense 
so that the adversary has only one option to choose his randomness. However, it requires many uh, heavy zero knowledge proofs in the signing process. Therefore, the signing process is not efficient. Uh, MUSIC2 is a concurrent work with ours, and we both use a similar approach. Uh, here, our parameter M and V corresponds to the same uh, parameter, and they show uh, MUSIC2 is secure if they choose the parameter V equals to 4 in this standard model. And if they choose the parameter equals to 2, then it is secure in the algebraic group model. The version uh, in the algebraic group model is the most efficient existing two-rational base mass signature scheme. And uh, similarly, we also show that our protocol is secure uh, in the algebraic group model if we choose m equals to 2. And with an optimized network, uh, which is based on a tree structure, uh, the signing process can be executed much efficiently. Um, in a nutshell, in this paper, our contribution is as follows. We construct a two-ranch based mass signature protocol that we call DWMS. Uh, the final signature in our protocol is the Shinov signature. And we prove that uh, our protocol is secure in algebraic group model. And also we define a new computationally hard problem that we call n one sum problem and show its hardness in AGM under the assumption that this strict logarithm problem is hard. So first I will explain you how our protocol works. Then I will explain how uh, we define the n one sum problem. And finally, I will briefly show how we uh, prove the security of DWMS. So uh, the key generation algorithm of our scheme is the same as the Schnorr signature scheme. I will explain the signing process uh, in the next slide. And key aggregation works as follows. Uh, given the public keys, the key aggregation algorithm first finds the scalar, which is the output of random oracle H2 for each signing key, and then sums all, all these uh, public keys. And the verification process, uh, again, is the same as the Schnorr signature scheme. Uh, in the first round of our scheme, in the signing process, first of all, the parties generate, uh, send the necessary messages to each other to generate the commitment of the Schnorr signature scheme. Therefore, each party generates first a random number from ZP and then commits to these random numbers. We call these random numbers as witnesses and these uh, group elements as pre-commitments. -pre then they send the uh, pre-commitments to each other and then first round ends. The second round of our protocol works as follows. First of all, each party generates the station ID of the signing process, which consists of the public key of the signers, the message that is going to be signed, and all the pre-commitments. And here, each party has uh, M pre-commitments. And then they uh, compute uh, the commitment of the Schnorr scheme. Um, how do they do that? Uh, they multiply each uh, pre-commitment with the uh, scalar that we define with alpha, and then they sum all of them. How we define the alpha? Alpha is the random oracle output of session ID and uh, in the corresponding index. And here we uh, call a linear combination of witnesses with random output as delinearization. And the reason that we use this naming is that the coefficients of the linear combinations are random and it cannot be known by the adversary before the adversary selects its own randomness. So it reduces the ability of adaptive random selection of uh, adaptive random selection by the adversary. 
after the commitment generation. Um, as in the Schnorr signature scheme, they compute the C value, which is the hash of the message, the aggregated public key and the commitment. And then they generate uh, individual partial signatures. And the individual partial signature consists of the delinearized witnesses uh, plus uh, the secret key multiplied with the C. And we call that as partial signature and they exchange the partial signatures with each other. In the end, the final signature is uh, C and S and where S is the sum of all partial signatures. Okay, now I'm going to explain you our a new uh, hard problem that we call entwined sum problem. Okay, um, so first of all, I want to show you how we come up with this problem. Uh, when we constructed the WMS, we first uh, wanted to attack the protocol. Uh, in our trials, we see that actually the following attack is possible. Uh, the adversary starts queue signing sessions with the party, honest party P, and the, therefore the honest party sends um, um, pre-commitments for each session. And after that, the adversary tries to find some pre-commitments and the forgery message, and also some scholars, Q, number of Q scholars that satisfies this equality. And in this equality, uh, the linear combination of CI values, here CI is the C value of i session. The linear combination of CI values is going to be equal to the forgery C values. And how we define the forgery C values? It is the hash of the forgery message, the aggregated public key, and also um, the linear, a linear combination of the linearized uh, pre-commitments pre of honest parties. And the restriction here is that this, there, there should be the same, relate, same relate, linear relation here and also here. And if the adversary can do that, in that case, he can forge the signature. And um, actually, we showed in the paper that the adversary can do that if M equals to one. It's an interesting uh, attack. You can check the paper for the attack. Uh, but uh, we see that it's not possible when M greater than one, as long as the discrete algorithm problem is hard. And from that uh, attack, we define our M and find some problem. And it's, it's, it, is as, it works as follows. He generates Q challenges where each Q challenges consists of M group elements. After that, he sends the group structure and all these challenges to the adversary. Adversary has access to the random oracle H, H1 and H, H prime. And all these random oracles maps to the uh, ZP. In the end, the adversary outputs a vector beta of size Q plus one from ZP. And some um, uh, output, Q, Q output from ordinary set, and also an output from ordinary set that we call omega here. And here the adversary wins if this equality is satisfied. So basically in this equality, if the linear combination of the uh, uh, of uh, random oracle H outputs are equal to random oracle output of H. And here the restriction, as you can see, is that the same linear relationship that is satisfied in this side of the equ equation in ZP also must be satisfied as the input of the random oracle H in G. Um, so here, how we define TU, TU is the delinearized, uh, some of the delinearized challenges. And so um, we show that our new problem is hard as long as M is greater than one. 
and discrete logarithm problem is hard. And we show this in the algebraic group model. Therefore, this uh, shows that um, M must be at least two in the in at least two in the WMS in our mass signatures. Now I'm going to briefly explain you how we show the security of the WMS. And for that first, I need to explain our security model. So we consider uh, the security of our multi-signature scheme in the plain public key model. And it works is in, as very similar to uh, existential unforgeability game. So here, challenger generates the secret and public key and then sends the parameters and the public key to the adversary. And the adversary has access to the signing oracle. And for that, he sends message and receives a signature. And he can do that as many as he can. And in the end, he outputs a forgery. And we say that adversary wins if the set of public keys includes uh, the honest uh, party's key, PK, and message star has never been queried to the signing oracle, and the verification of the forgery works. So we show that uh, our DWMS is a secure mass signature scheme in the algebraic group model and the random oracle model, assuming that one more discrete logarithm problem is hard, and two and my sum problem is hard. So how uh, one more discrete logarithm problem works, um, the challenger generates a group, uh, a group structure and picks a Q plus one elements from uh, the group and sends them to the adversary as a challenge. And then the adversary has access to the discrete logarithm oracle for that, he sends a group element and receives the discrete logarithm of that group element. Uh, but he can do that at most few times. And in the end, if the adversary sends the discrete logarithm of all the challenges, then he wins. Um, now I'm going to explain you uh, briefly how we prove the security of the WMS. Uh, we assume that there exists, a for there exists a forger which breaks the WMS. And given that forger, we construct another adversary R, which breaks the OMDL problem. Uh, R receives the OMDL challenges from the game. And then in order to simulate the DWMS, he needs to pick a, he needs to pick a public key and he picks as a public key the last uh, OMDL challenge. And then he gives the group structure and the public key to the forger. Now he needs to, he needs to uh, simulate this signing oracle as well. And for that, when he receives, for the first round, when he receives a message to sign, uh, instead of uh, picking witnesses as described in the DWMS, um, he uses the OMDL challenges to generate the pre-commitments. And for that, he um, use random uh, linear combination of the first cube uh, OMDR challenges and obtains the two pre-commitments. And in the second round, when he receives the message, the pre-commitment of the adversary and the public key of the adversary, he cannot simulate it because he cannot obtain the partial signature since he doesn't know the secret key and also the discrete logarithm of the pre-commitments. He gets help from the uh, discrete logarithm oracle of the OMDL, and for that he computes uh, the group element S1, where its discrete logarithm is equal to uh, partial signature. And then he gives a partial signature to A. In each signing request, when he goes to the uh, discrete logarithm oracle, he obtains the linear equation with the unknowns of the discrete logarithm of OMDL challenges. And since he can do that Q times, in the end, he obtains uh, Q uh, linear equations with the Q plus one unknowns. And we can show that these linear equations are linearly independent. 
Now he needs one more uh, linear equation in order to solve the system of equations. And for that, he receives, uh, after receiving the fourth degree, he generates another uh, linear equation. And here uh, is the place where we need the algebraic group model. Uh, in algebraic group model, whenever the adversary submits a group element, it also gives the representation of it. And therefore, um, uh, the adversary R obtains the representation of the forgery commitment and the representation of the public key of the adversary. And we, using that, he obtains the last equation. And last uh, linear equation is independent from the first Q equations, linear equations, because uh, if it is not, then it means that the adversary A breaks the uh, two and wind some problem. Since it is an hard problem, we can assume that this case never happens. And then the adversary R can solve this system of equations and obtains the discrete logarithm of Q plus one challenges of the RMDL game. And it outputs that. Now I will conclude my presentation uh, by uh, giving you uh, uh, our contribution in this paper. So we constructed the WMS, uh, which is an efficient two round Schnorr based mass signature scheme. And we introduced a new computational hard problem that we call M and Wine sum problem. Uh, we believe that this M um, and why some problem can be useful against preventing uh, K-sum attacks. And we show its hardness in the algebraic group model. As a future work, I think it is very interesting to see whether uh, our new problem is hard in, the, hard in the standard model as well. And also um, it will be interesting to see the security proof of the WMS in the uh, standard model. Thanks for listening.